Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, this talk is about the multi-language pipeline on Beam. Um, and I'm He Jong from Google, and I'm a software engineer, and I'm developing a Beam um, about the multi-language pipelines and IOs. Okay, so uh, today's agenda is a first. I'm going to introduce the Apache Beam portability model, um, talk about the P transform, P collections, and environments, and show you um, how the portable uh, pipeline is executed, and also how external transform works, and a little bit about the APIs that you can actually use the external transform um, from a Python pipeline using the Java. And also I'll show you some demo and uh, give some tips and current support status. Um, so before portability model was introduced, we have um, three SDKs and three or more runners and um, some execution environments. So just assume that there is no portability model, then uh, each SDK should have uh, each runner, like a Java SDK, Dataflow runner, Java SDK, Flink runner, Java SDK, Spark runner. Also Python SDK, Dataflow runner, Python SDK, Flink runner, Go, uh, Python SDK, Spark runner. Um, this will increase the complexity of development. Also, if we want to add one more SDK, um, such as Rust SDK, then we need to develop the each runner one, one more time, right? So we need to develop the Dataflow runner, Flink runner, the Spark runner for Rust SDK again. So there are N SDKs and M runners then total combination uh, of complexity is n times m, right? So we introduced the portability model, which introduced the common layer between the SDK and runner and runner and execution environment. So each SDK translates its pipeline model to um, run API model which is the common model, universal model for all runners. So we can just, if you want to introduce a new SDK, we can only develop uh, the translator from the pipeline. For example, if Rust SDK, the Rust pipeline to the run API. And also, if you want to add one more runner, then we can just develop the runner that accepts this common model run API. So what's the run API? It's a model in the protobuf. And this SDK and runners um, the connect each, each other with the gRPC library. Um, so I will talk about the beam model uh, further. So Beam model, basically the Beam pipeline model. Uh, it's basically a directed acyclic graph, which consists of the P collections and P, tra P, P transforms and P collections. Uh, if you have ever used um, data flow, it shows the graph, something like in the right side of the slide. So which represents the, the pipeline. P collection uh, represents data, a set of data, and pre transform is a transformer that accepts input from one or more P collections and produce the outputs uh, for one or more P collections. Coder, um, this is actually the important components of the pipeline. Coder de defines the how to encode and decode data uh, during the transmission between runners 
workers and execution environments. Uh, environments actually spe specifies the type and capabilities of execution environments, uh, such as this environment can execute Java code or this environment can execute uh, the Python code and this environment can execute um, splitable funds. this environment can execute something else. And also it also specifies the types like this environment is a Docker, uh, this environment is a process, external process or some process launched by the worker or something like that. Um, the important thing is P collections and standard coders are actually SDK language agnostic. So each P transform has its execution environment, but the P collection and coder, uh, there's no execution environment or anything. So the P collection of string is just P collection of string for any SDK. For Java SDK, it's P collection of string. The Python SDK, it's also P collection of string. Um, this is a code snippet from the pipeline definition uh, model, protobuf. So this is a protobuf message. So pipeline components consist of um, these maps. So the transform maps actually um, maps from the transform ID to transform message, then P, P collection map uh, maps from P collection ID to P collection message. Also the coder maps, uh, maps from the coder ID to the coder message and so forth. A P transform message looks like this. Um, you don't need to understand all of these fields, but um, I just put uh, the actual code here uh, to show the, how it looked like. So P transform message is, uh, has these kind of fields. The important field is the function spec. It's URN and payload. So for example, um, Pardu. Pardu is uh, one of P transform, the Apache Beam support. So when we represent Pardu with the P transform message, the Pardu will have its URN, its specific URN like um, Apache Beam um, colon Pardu colon version one, something like that. And Pardu payload, the serialized uh, bytes of Pardu payload which may um, have a serialized um, um, Java function or serialized Python functions or something like that. So payload is defined by the URN and URN specified which uh, P transform uh, this message represent. Also uh, note that each P transform has an environment ID which defines its execution environment. Um, this is how P collection look like. Um, the important field here is a coder ID. So each P collection has coder, defined its coder. So SDK uh, can read from these P collections or write to this P collection if they know about this coder. So there are sets of standard coders like a string numbers or something like that. And also some um, SDK specific coders like a serialized object for a Java and pickled object for Python or something like that. And, and these kind of um, coders can be only um, used by that specific coder. So, Java serialized object coder can be used only from the Java SDK, of course. Um, this is environment. Um, here, the, the important field is URN um, and dependencies maybe. So URN is one of uh, this from the right. 
So your end can be the Docker uh, or the process or external or defaults, these kind of things. Uh, Docker environment is preferred by default and kind of most stable and most tested. Um, and also there is the field for dependencies, which uh, defines the dependency set of dependencies. So for example, uh, if environment is Docker, and the payload will be the Docker URL, something like um, Java Docker execution environments. Then this dependency field specifies the Java jars uh, for executing any produce or any user code. Yeah. So this is example of portable pipeline execution. Um, so let's assume that we execute the code on the left, left side. Uh, right side diagram of the right side shows how to execute this code. So there is a runner um, and execution environment. This is a uh, Docker image. Uh, the, the Docker process. So when we execute this, the create of create uh, the, the elements one, two, three. And this uh, map element p transform is just the map. It accepts the integer and produce the integer. And this uh, map element p transform simply just um, Revert, reverse its, uh, its sign. So when you put the positive integer here, it uh, just revert the, the sign to negative integers and negative to positive, right? So when runner execute this pipeline, uh, create of uh, ex executed inside the runner, but this map element part, will be executed in execution environment. So when runner launches the execution environment, uh, runner actually sends this instruction message. Uh, we call th this instruction. So we actually sent the P um, transform proto represent this map element to um, execution environment and say, uh, when you're ready, then tell me uh, when you're ready. So when execution environment sets uh, and deserialize this uh, map element inside here and say, uh, I'm ready to process the element, then runner sends the uh, element from this P collections through some buffer and through the, the gRPC connections and um, um, send side buffer and receiving side buffer and go through these uh, this, uh, functions and also go through the send side buffer, receive side buffer and the P transform here. So for any part do, uh, we actually execute the Pardu in this Docker environment. Um, yes, that's how we, um, this is a simplified version of how we execute the portable execution uh, pipelines. This is um, another example of portable pipeline. So the input P collection is empty basically, and we execute this, it's basically the same thing, um, the create a one, two, three, four, and map elements, and doing some um, group by uh, operations, like some per key, and output is uh, this. When you expand uh, this diagram, it looks something like this. So, from the empty P collections, runner executes create of one, two, three, four. 
um, and it produced the one, two, three, four uh, P collection of integer. And the Docker environments, the, the Java um, Docker environment to execute uh, this Purdue and produce the P collections. And the group by key, actually, this is not only group by key, but uh, it, this is a composite P transform, consists of some group by key and some Purdue, something like that. So this um, is executed in a runner and a Docker environment. And it finally produced this. So um, it's a time to think about the multi-language pipeline here. So you remember that um, the P collections and a coder, um, they just don't care about the SDKs, right? So this part, the 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 empty to create a to P collection part, actually don't care uh, about the SDK language. Also, these P collections, um, P collection key value of string integer don't care about the SDK languages. So what if we uh, replace this Docker images, the Java Docker images to Python and also write this map element function in Python. So when we replace um, the P transform in the middle. Um, well, uh, it should just work, right? Because um, Python SDK also understand the what integer means and what string means and also what key value means. So it can just accept the P collections of um, integer and also can produce p collection of key value of string integer. Um, so how can we write the multi-language pipelines, especially the Python multi-language pipelines? So note that multi-language pipelines can be any combinations of SDKs, right? So you can use Python to write the entire pipeline and use um, Java external transform uh, for your um, Python pipeline. Also, you can write, uh, you can use Java to write your own pipeline and use Python external transform um, in your Java pipeline. So you can um, make any combinations like Go pipeline using the Java external transform, Java external transform using Go pipeline, something like that. Um, so this example is about the Python uh, pipeline, which uses Java external transforms. So um, there is um, two uh, APIs mainly uh, the Apache Beam provides for the multi-language pipelines. Um, the one is external transform and the other one is uh, Java external transform. So the external transform API looks like this. So it specifies the URN of what external transform you wanna use and also defines a payload and um, it uh, defines the expansion service too. Um, you don't need to understand expansion service here. Uh, there is explanation of ex expansion service later, but expansion service is something like um, um, provides the P transform proto you want uh, from the foreign SDKs. So for example, this um, program is written in Python. And if you wanna use, uh, if you use the Java expensive service, then this external transform uh, API actually sends the request of 
this URN. So let's say I want to use Kafka IO transform from Java SDK. Then you specify the Kafka IO transform URN here and connect to the Java Experience service. Then Java Experience service actually returns the P transform proto of Kafka IO. Then later you can just use that P transform proto when you produce the, the, the portability model of um, this whole pipeline. So this API is pretty low level and um, the Python SDK also provides the higher level a a API, which is called Java External Transform. Uh, this example is how to use text.io uh, dot write, the text.io writes from Java API. So from Java, you can use something like uh, this in a box. So text.io dot write dot to and some path. Then you can write the content of ptransform to somewhere uh, locally or to GCS or um, some storage. Of course, um, Python API also has the text.io, but uh, this is just example. So just assume that if you want to use the text.io module from, Python, from Java, then you can simply uh, the put the module name, the class, the fully qualified uh, class name uh, here, and then uh, just call the method um, as you uh, write the code in the Java like this, and it, it just works. So inside of this transform, it used the low level um, external transform and it constructs the payload uh, for some, um, some URNs. So it handled everything uh, under the hood. So um, however, from the Java side, you need to use expansion service, right? So for uh, just built-in transforms like uh, text.io or um, Kafka.io or something like that, you can just use Java external transform API from Python. But what if you want to use your own transform uh, from Java? Then you need to um, register your transform to expansion service. Um, so this is a code snippet to register the prefix, um, prefix transform. Uh, prefix transform basically just put um, the prefix to the, 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 the string element in the P collections. So um, this build external method inside this build external method you can just write the, the P transform you want, and then you register this external transform builder to external transform registrar here. So it's relatively simple. Just um, put whatever you want in build external, and um, your uh, external transform builder to known builders and register this registrar to uh, external transform registrar. Okay, um, that's the overview of um, how to use external transform. And this is some more details of how external transform, uh, how external transform expansion works. So you already, so the example code uh, of how external transform works. So this is actually the each the split steps. So how it works in the background. So native SDK sends 
the expansion request to expand service. So in the example, previous example, the external transform API, the right external transform API, then when the pipeline apply this external transform, actually this is also the P transform, right? So when pipeline apply this external P transform, it sends uh, the expansion requests to expansion service. So which means I want um, text.io P transform. Uh, then expansion service looks up uh, the requested P transform, for example, text.io, and locally expand it uh, with the context received along with the expansion request. The context mean here is uh, mainly the, the information about the input P transform. So we uh, make an input P transform in the expansion service and look up uh, the P transform requested, for example, text.io, then locally expand text.io inside the expansion service and then convert that expanded P transform to proto, the P transform proto, and send that P transform proto to uh, the original SDK. So when original SDK receives that proto, then it still, uh, we're constructing the pipeline objects, not the pipeline transform. So we temporarily store that expanded P transform inside uh, the external transform objects and wait uh, when we actually translate the pipeline to pipeline plural. So when the native SDK translate the pipeline object to pipeline proto, then we just get the previously stored um, external transform proto and, and plug in that and use that uh, for the proto translations. So final pipeline proto will have the P transform proto from uh, the foreign SDK uh, from the expense service. Um, this diagram shows how expansion request and expansion response works. So basically this is diagram shows the same thing I just explained. So when we use external transform low level API, it sends expansion request to Java expense service. Um, in this example, the Java expense service, but, but any expense service you can use. Uh, so in Java experience service, we create the input information and look for the transform specified by the beam transforms xlang at one urn. This process is called expand. So when you expand this uh, previous uh, graph, uh, it will have the actual P transform at, uh, in, in its pipeline object, right? And then uh, experience service translate uh, this P transform to proto and send back to the Python SDK. And the Python SDK store that uh, proto inside the external transform. Um, in the meantime, until we actually translate the whole uh, pipeline object to pipeline proto. Yeah, this is, um, so expansion request and expansion response is also the gRPC, um, use the gRPC protocol. So this is a message expansion request message and expansion response message. So this is actual message, uh, so how it look like. So expansion request has components. Uh, I said 
uh, I mentioned context, uh, which is basically used for the input, specifying input P collections. And the P transform and um, the namespace for the expanded P transform to avoid name collisions uh, between the, the native transform and external transform. Um, and also some code requests. So P transform I just showed you, but here is the same slide. So P transform message actually has a function spec and function spec has URN. So we use this URN to specify which external transform you want to use, or you want to request. So this P transform transform field specified, we want this transform and component means, and we want to use this input. Um, and the payload field here in function spec, we use, we defined um, the external configuration payload, uh, which is uh, mostly used for external transform expansion. So um, this is just side note, but yeah, it's not important. Um, this is real example of expansion requests from Python, uh, from Java to Python. So this ex expansion requests, I just copy and paste it uh, from my example to the slide. Uh, this expansion request asks the Python P transform, which called fully qualified named, and it has the payload of additional information that how to um, expand the, or how to construct uh, this P transform. It's uh, yeah, it's basically serialized bytes. And yeah, uh, expansion response looks the same, but the difference is uh, this time the transform is not requests, but it should have the actual um, P transform proto from the expansion service. So this is example of ex actual expansion response from the external service. So it has, um, so this is, uh, this the information above um, on the top of the slide sent from, uh, from the native SDK. It's from the expansion request, but the difference is now it's the composite transform so it has output information, output P collection information, and also the actual implementation, the actual proto of the P transform, and also it specified the, the environment ID. So it now has the information that this transform is from the Python. So the environment ID, this environment uh, should point to the Python Docker image or Python execution environment. Um, yeah, that's um, the overview of external transform. So this is some useful tips. So when you want to use uh, the actual Java external transform. So by default, um, so we here we mostly consider the multi-language pipeline that's uh, Python multi-language pipeline that uses Java because that's well tested uh, and it's uh, has GA status, so it's uh, available 
for the data flow runner. Um, so we are, uh, these tips are about the, the Python pipeline, which uses Java external transforms. So when you want to use Java external transforms, you need to consider uh, the dependencies of your transform. So by default, um, Java ex expansion service uh, puts the dependency information to the uh, to the environment proto from its class path. So when you bundling all dependencies into a shadow jar and put that shadow jar uh, to class path of the expansion service, then um, the expansion service automatically put that shadow jar to the dependency list. Uh, otherwise, um, you need to you you also can use uh, files to stage command line options. So files to stage and specify the list of jars. Then the expense service put that list of jars to uh, the dependency list in the environment proto. So this is environment proto, actual example of environment proto. So you can see the list of dependencies. Here you have two dependencies. Uh, the type is the file and the path is um, here. And the role is we want to stage um, this file to uh, with this name uh, to the staging locations. Yeah. So when you put your jar on the class path on the expansion service, the expansion service uh, fill this information in the environment proto. Uh, and this is one uh, other important thing um, when you want to use external transform. So I mentioned briefly in a previous slide, but elements uh, need to be encoded and decoded uh, by standard coders, of course, because um, the P collections from your native API uh, SDK, the Python SDK, if the P collection from Python SDK is encoded by pickle coder, then there's no way to use that element from the Java P transform, right? Because Java P transform, just Java SDK don't know how to decode that uh, element. So some useful standard coders are the byte array coder, uh, Boolean, string, key value, some numbers, double, iterables, uh, just some rows, something like this. So row coder is especially actually um, especially useful since you can define the composite types. Uh, so row coder of um, first row is the first column is string and second column is integer or any combination of single coders. So, hey Jung, uh, just a quick um, message. We we are uh, on the original scheduled time for finishing. We have a fifteen minute break, so we can continue going and use the time from that break. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, please, yep. uh, if we could do the demos uh, so that we don't yeah. run into the time of the next session. Um, I, yeah, only four slides left. So awesome. I can quickly finish uh, the remaining slide. So yeah, this is um, the demo of the, the Java word count using the Python text IO. So when you see here, it uses the read from text from the Python and use the count globally from Java, right? So this is the pipeline code. And when you build this pipeline, um, this is how I uh, run the pipeline. 
Um, so, I'm going to use the direct runner. So, I will launch the direct runner job server and launch the experiences service. And run this command, the, the command I just showed you. So when you run the pipeline, it connects to the job server and also the experience service and execute the pipelines here. It will finish in 20, 30 seconds, but I will show you. Oh, it just finished. Yeah. So basically, you can use um, the Python transform from Java. Um, if you want to use pandas data frame operations transforms or some tfx and you can you will need uh, the python external transform um, this is simple in reverse of uh, the example so the python word count using the java text io so this is this uses uh, org Apache Beam SDK IO text IO and from and yeah and from because from is the keyword in Python you cannot use just dot from so this is something work around the get attribute so from and use this so you can also do the same uh, like this. I'll show you the word count. This is the code. And when you run, of course, it's um, just run. Okay, so this is some example code. Um, so how to write and register the Java external transform and how to use Java external transform. So this is test experience service we use for testing. And there is some external transform tests and example word count, um, multi-language, the cross language word count. Um, yeah, so it's, there is some benefit of merge language pipelines. So you can save time and resources by implementing P transform once and utilizing all other SDKs. So if you prefer the Java, then you can write your P transform in Java and register that P transform to expense service, then use that P transform from any other SDKs. So um, another benefit is um, you can pick the best existing P-Transform implementations from any SDKs. So Python SDK has, um, for example, Text.io, Java SDK has Text.io too, but they might have uh, different capability, uh, different features. And you can pick any any P transform you want from any SDK. Um, also, when you develop um, the new pipelines, uh, you can simplify your development environment uh, by just using um, single languages to develop the pipeline, and no need to learn or teach new programming languages. Uh, to you for to use um, some specific SDKs. So 
Yeah, this is the final slide. Um, the current support status uh, as of now. Uh, supported uh, means here is actually the certain combinations of hosting guest SDKs are well tested and we provide utility functions for easier use. So when we say we support the Java pipeline using the uh, Python pipeline using Java external transform, which means we test this combination and also we have some high level utility functions available for these combinations. So Dataflow runner, the runner v2, the new runner um, support the multi-language pipelines and Flink portable runner, Spark portable runner and direct portable runner. Um, because basically um, the uh, the, the multi-language pipeline is based on a portability model. So the most runner which support the portable pipeline also support the multi-language pipeline. Uh, supported SDK is currently the Python using Java external transform. It's uh, available for data flow now. Um, it's commonly used for um, Java SDK IO modules, but you can use whatever you want uh, if you want to use other uh, other transforms then you can use that the java pipeline using python external transform is uh, still in development still in testing and bug fixing uh, it will be the preview status uh, for data flow later this year uh, we actually testing it for uh, the TFX and Pandas data frame uh, operations. So, and the Go pipeline using the other SDKs, uh, they are also in development, but not yet available. It may work, it just work or uh, not work. So if you're brave enough, the brave developer, then you can just uh, try to use the multi-language pipelines for Go. Um, that's all of the slide. Yep. Thank you so much, Hee Young. Um, Do we have? Um, we have some time, a couple of minutes for some questions. Uh, we mm -hmm. have several questions along the the session. I think several of them were answered along the way. Like we had some questions on on why would we need like at the first we had some questions on what would be the benefits of, of multi-language pipelines but we already covered that uh mm -hmm. one pending well somebody ans asked if the um, if the expansion service should be running let me make that questions for an for any expansion service to be called does that mean that the transformation should be running as part of some beam job via another SDK? No, it's not running a job. Um, it just, um, how can I say? It just expands the P transform. So expand uh, means constructing the pipelines. So when you write the pipeline, you use P, the pipeline dot apply and some p transform right and when we execute that apply actually what you're doing is you're constructing the pipeline object so it's not actually run the job the running a job is when we complete the construction of the pipeline and then we can run that that pipeline object um, in the portability model, we translate the pipeline object to proto and run the send the proto to runner and runner runs the proto. Um, but we don't need to run the job for expansion. Um, it just constructs the pipeline and um, pick some part of that constructed pipeline, the P transform part, and then translate that to proto and send back to the native SDK. 
Okay, thank you. We have another question. Well, we have several questions from Sankar, where I believe most of them were answered already, but I want to make an, one, the last one. Uh, can you also talk briefly about URNs for custom transforms? Uh, how are UR, URNs used in custom transforms? Um, custom transforms. I think you mean the transform that users writes, uh, not as compared to the built-in transform to SDK. Yes, yes. Um, you can choose any URNs, unique URNs, um, and you can use that URNs. We have um, the convention for URNs. It should okay. start um, some Apache Beam colon so naming conventions are there, but uh, as long as it's unique, um, it's okay. So. Okay. And one last question um, from Dan Young. Are external transforms supported when using a SDK container image? For example, like using your own custom container with a Python SDK in data flow? So, let me make the question again. Are external transfers supported when using an SDK container image for data flow? Pro I suppose uh, Dan says that he assumes that a number of dependencies needs to be met in order for this to happen. Um, yes. Uh, let's, yes, it's a port SDK container image. Yes, and oh. um, mm -hmm. okay, no, uh, that's fine. You want to add something else? Um, no. So SDK container image, uh, you probably mean the the pipeline options uh, of SDK container image. So the using SDK container image option already means that you're using the, the fun API uh, as known as the portable pipeline. So yes, um, you can use that, that option. Okay. To use your own, own custom container, yeah. Awesome. Thanks everybody for joining. We'll see you in our next session in Beam College.